Well, so this is, this is your moment, you know. This afternoon, you'll be able to ask questions throughout the afternoon, but this is particularly the session where you can ask questions about anything, okay? So, perhaps to break the ice, I know some of you are a bit shy, I'll ask the first question, and I will ask a tough question, you know, just to show that uh, these two can, can take just about anything, if necessary, as you said, as you said, don't go. No, one, one conversation, gentlemen, that has been going on in town in the last few months is the lack of transparency of Berek. And I, you know, okay, this, this day proves the opposite. This is the most transparent organization. You can ask these guys anything, anything you want. But story goes, a few months ago, Berek released a famous preliminary assessment. I don't need to continue. You know what I'm talking about. Eh? <laughs> and some people you know, in this room and outside this room would have liked to know who was in Berek was in favor of releasing this damn report and who was against, you know? And we couldn't find out, you know? For example, if you look at your American colleagues, you know, there are only five, I know, you are, we are 27. Makes matters a bit simpler. But you can see on every decision, you know, who is, who is voting, who is, has a dissenting opinion. So why don't you do that? Why don't you? Would you be the first? <laughs> No, no problem. Well, the, the easy part of this, I mean, the easy way to, to respond to this one would be to discuss the formal part. So we follow BEREC regulation, we follow procedures based on BEREC regulation, and according to this, we don't need to, to disclose voting information. So that's it. But um, maybe in the next round of uh, updating BEREC regulation, legislators can even reconsider this one but I this is the formality I mean this is this is not important I, I my in my personal view what is important is the content and not the process so it's the decision itself is the assessment itself that is of real interest I mean uh, this is the substance of the work we develop policy we develop regulatory frameworks proposals this is this is the real interesting mm -hmm. part. So, uh, in my opinion, I wouldn't care much. And to be honest, there might be also other bodies in Europe that do not disclose similar similar information. Um, Berec is a is a big body. So, 38 members, some of them with voting rights, some of them without voting rights, and of course, in such a big body, it's there will be different opinions, mm. different views in, in, in certain cases. And this is why BEREC uh, discussions are quite constructive and interesting. We, we don't expect everything to be uh, approved anonymously or uh, with a huge majority or something like this. But for me, it is important that a BEREC decision is a decision with the same strength and uh, respected by everybody whether it is received anonymously or with a majority vote. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Katas. Now, I will, would like to open the floor, of, you know, question from Luke. Yes, I see Luke and I see Lotte. Ladies first, Luke, I would say. Lotte from GSMA. Could we have a mic here? Uh, the, uh, a cue, the, the time eh, is, we have started 10 minutes late, eh? so you, we need to adjust the time clock here. We're not going to cut into the Q&A. Eh? We started 13 minutes late. I've got... <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Lotte. Is, is on? Yes. Thank you, Lotte Ebelgaard from the DSMA. Again, a question about transparency, perhaps. Um, we understand that uh, Beric is planning a study trip to South Korea uh, coming up. Uh, actually, uh, already next week. Can you shed a bit more light on um, who you're going to meet uh, during your study trip and uh, what, you, what you expect to get back, what you plan to explore out there? Because that's love K-pop, but that's, uh, that's between <laughs> us. We wouldn't like it to be known. <laughs> well, uh, actually, I'm flying on Saturday to South Korea. <laughs> so, uh, Berek study trip, is, I mean, takes place every year. Um, it's, not, it's not a kind of tradition, in my opinion, is part of the real work of BEREC. So it's part of the core of our work program. Uh, what we want to do, what is the objective of the BEREC study trip every year, is to, 
to visit a country outside the European Union, of course. We want to explore technology developments. We want to explore regulatory practices and um, good ideas in policy and regulation. We want to explore other markets in other areas of the world and also deployments in electronic communications networks and digital, uh, digital platforms, digital systems. Why we want to do this? Because we need, this, we need to have a global view in order to be ready to come up with regulatory proposals uh, and policy proposals in a timely manner and quite efficient. So this is very useful for BEREC. And the exchange we have is also very important. Mainly we target three uh, groups of stakeholders when we go in a study trip visit. So we have governments and regulators, we have industry and markets, mainly electronic communications and digital systems, and innovation ecosystems, because through innovation ecosystems we can identify the technology trends, what, what are the, the new technologies coming. So we can get prepared and uh, better understand where future regulatory actions should be, should, should be focused. So this is, this, is about, this is the story about BEREC. This year, of course, we go to South Korea. Actually, South Korea would be the destination of BEREC study trip in 21. In 21, we didn't go for a study trip because of COVID. It was the only year that we missed the study trip. So we go this year in South Korea. And of course, I can understand that everybody thinks that Berek goes to South Korea to discuss the fair contribution and the sending party network pays uh, legislation. And um, actually, it's not a single one, but a series of legislative procedures started in 16. But I can tell you, this is, this is a coincidence. Of course, we will take advantage of the opportunity and discuss with South Korean uh, colleagues on the government and regulatory and regulator side, but also with the industry, the impact of such regulation. I mean, it's, it's a very good opportunity to have, to have a direct exchange on, on this. We have been discussing quite a lot about this mm -hmm. South Korean Mm -hmm. uh, legislation, the sending party network space, etc. Uh, normally, every time we go on, on a study trip, we publish a report afterwards with uh, details on the stakeholders we have met um, and main conclusions from our mission. And this is what we will do also this, this year. Okay, thank you, Kostas. So we go to Luc here. You could have left the, the mic on the table. Thank you. Who wants to go next? Thank you, Luc. Thank you very much. I'm Luc Hendricks, Director General of ECTA. Uh, I, I would like to ask uh, Berek, wh what could you do to improve the, uh, in fact, the, the, the discussion room and, and, and uh, certainly when there are workshops or, or, or organi events organized with, with the stakeholders and to create room for substantive debate. Okay? If we would compare, we are now uh, discussing the the recommendation where we are at an end over a process of two years, there has never been a decent discussion with the stakeholders where the stakeholders can oppose their arguments and, and so we could improve the decision-making process. And we understand that the COVID has made that difficult, but now COVID is passed and I believe we okay. would gain in, in having a space where the substance can be, mm -hmm. can be discussed. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Luc. Uh, could we have uh, afterwards, and because the time is running up, quick, quick question and quick answers, if, if it's possible. Yeah. O okay, I will be, I will be very brief. Uh, engaging with uh, stakeholders is a priority for us. We want to be open. I, uh, I don't think we can uh, come up with uh, efficient proposals for policy and regulation without interacting with with, with stakeholders. Berek Stakeholder Forum is our main event every year. Of course, it is once per year, but let me remind you that we have recently extended it to include the meet and greet session, which has been very, very successful. Of course, we run a number of workshops every year to, again, to come in touch with our uh, stakeholders and exchange with them. But of course, run the number of workshops we can have 
depends also on the resources we can allocate, so it's, it's a trade-off. Uh, but it's not only workshops organized by BEREC that give an opportunity to, to, for exchange between BEREC and stakeholders. We try to be present in all major events of our sector. Um, we have been traveling quite a lot. I, frankly speaking, I, I get a lot of criticism back in my office for traveling a lot. So, um, I mean, participating to other events is also an opportunity for exchange. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kostas. Who, yes, Ben from MVNO Europe. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Benjamin from MVNO Europe, the Association of the Virtual and Mobile Network Operators. I got two questions that are a bit related. The first question is on the mobile wholesale access study you're doing. Do you have any idea what you will do with the, the findings of that study? And the second thing is related to a current ca well, a case that was just uh, published on, on the Czech Republic. Uh, for us, it seemed quite clear that market is not working well and MVNOs have real trouble to get into that, that market. Uh, could you tell us a bit more why you justified the Commission's decision uh, to not allow the tech regulator to do anything on this? Yeah. Uh, I will start with uh, the second, the second part, the second, the second, the second question. Indeed, we examined, as it is foreseen in the regulation and the framework, um, the case of uh, the proposals of CTU. Uh, for regulating mobile wholesale uh, market in Czech Republic. Of course, we want to promote competition. Of course, we want to promote innovation. We followed the guidelines, and our expert group uh, came to the conclusion that at this point, it might be disproportionate to introduce the Exante SMP regulation for the market. But maybe we should look at this problem on the competition uh, side, um, competition law side. Of course I'm concerned if I see prices, I follow prices in different markets in Czech Republic, I can tell they are high. I, I got the same criticism in Greece recently, but maybe the X and the SMP is not the only way to go to, to solve this issue. But in any case, BEREC experts came to this conclusion and this was Berek's opinion in, in, this, in the process. Uh, with regards to our uh, study, the one started last year, uh, it, will, it is ready. Uh, it will be approved very soon and published, I would say, by mid-April. Mid yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kostas. Uh, Claudio from uh, Buk, the Organization of Consumers in Europe. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Philip, for the word. Yes, uh, Claudio Teixeira from BEUC, the European Consumer Organization. And um, my question is uh, very, very short, as requested. It concerns the, the gigabit recommendation, which is now on, uh, on Berek's desk. Um, this is something we're very concerned about, given that, in fact, uh, we do see this as uh, some criticism have been floating about as, um, indeed, kind of a license for incumbents to uh, move away from cost-based uh, wholesale access, which is for us the success story of uh, EU telecommunications over the past two decades. So um, my question would be is just, we know we're preparing an opinion that's going to come out later in April, but uh, we're just wondering if you, there's any thoughts you can share with us at this moment in time and the preliminary thoughts and uh, uh, any particular developments you might have uh, on that. Thank you. Well, indeed, gigabit recommendation is very important. Uh, gigabit Infrastructure Act as well, uh, and they are both part of this connectivity package, also related to the exploratory consultation, I mean, with regards to the future of networks. Gigabit Recommendation and Gigabit Infrastructure Act are very important because they will allow, they should allow, reducing civil engineering costs, uh, and, admin and simplify administrative procedures with regards to network deployment. So it's very relevant to the discussion mm. about investments in networks, etc. At this stage, we work on preparing BEREC's opinion uh, for gigabit recommendation. 
we need to respect the time frame of the process, so we need to be ready by mid-May latest and submit our opinion. Um, I'm afraid at this stage I cannot disclose any specific conclusions or uh, uh, any information from the opinion. It's not finalized yet and has not been approved yet, but we will come out with our opinion in the uh, first half of May. I don't see... Please don't be shy. You, oh, sorry, thank you so much. I, yeah, uh, Joanna from Metnu. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you were uh, hiding well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have a question about the BEREC uh, work program for 2023 uh, and four. We see more uh, work items related to uh, future market and technological trends. And I would like to, to know a bit what, uh, what you're looking uh, at here and what will be the, the impact you, on the regulatory, on your work, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, in our work program, of course, we look at the traditional electronic communication uh, networks and services part, but also see uh, the future. So we are becoming more and more related to digital platforms and, regula and digital regulations. So our work program in 23, in 24 needs to be balanced and cover both. So it's, mm -hmm. we cannot uh, leave out the trend we see today. I mean, convergence of software and networks uh, and uh, electronic communication networks and digital platforms becoming more and more dependent. So this should be reflected in our work program. The second thing we try to do with our work programs, both 23 and 24, we want to look forward, look to the future, identify the trends, market trends and technology trends because otherwise we cannot work on efficient policy and regulatory proposals. So that's what we did in work program 23. In, we had 51 different projects, but 13 new projects looking at current trends. And we want to address this, for example, uh, wholesale only operators like fiber companies, tower companies, mm -hmm. low earth orbit satellites, uh, migration to very high capacity networks, cloudification and softwareization of networks, etc. And this is what we, will, we want to continue in 24. So we need to keep up with the trends. Thank you. Uh, okay, yes, the, the, this is the final question. I'm, 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 uh, and then because our time is, is up. Uh, thank you. Portuguese law firm, um, and users. So uh, my question is, uh, it seems that we have um, listened from the meet and greet sessions that there is a concern uh, with end users' uh, rights. And we have seen also from the program that BEREC is going to focus on these issues. Uh, it seems though that these issues are going to be relegated for a um, uh, later time or a, la a later moment in time. Is this correct? Because we are seeing that a lot of member states are concerned with these issues. We are seeing regulators concerned. Uh, so when can we expect more vigorous action or uh, some opinion coming out from BEREC on this issue? Will I do that? I can start. Yeah. Well, 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 I guess we, we have an item in, in our working program for 2024, but if you think there's something else, what we could do, you can propose that as mm -hmm. well. And you can uh, because because like, I, like I said, we are really, really <laughs> open, open to, uh, to, to the su suggestions. Yeah. But we know that there are many aspects of the end users' uh, rights to, to address. In fact, that's the reason why, why we have our first panel today as well. So, so we will really like to hear from you. Yeah. And perhaps a final question coming online uh, for one of you. It's, it's from Spotify. Spotify asking whether, what will be the role of BEREC in the DMA? Will it focus solely on messaging services or will it have, will it have a, broader, a broader role? 
Well, uh, we have recently seen the decision for setting up the DMA high-level group. So Berek will be there uh, with six members, with six delegates. Uh, we expect to have the first meeting soon on, mm -hmm. on this high-level group. So I don't know details of the agenda on this. Of course, the interoperability messaging, messaging interoperability issue is, is very important and included in our work program for sure. But I Thank think you. more will come on DMA. More will, ah, ah, so it was a good question. <laughs> 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 more, on, more on this later. Don Kokosta, thank you very much for addressing those questions. I'll, 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 uh, we'll now move to our, to our next panel. Thank you very much. Yeah.